Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, but with an interesting twist. The patient is a 55-year-old woman with hypertension, but otherwise healthy. She came to the ER after a uh, car accident. Uh, she spun out uh, during a snowstorm and hit a tree, uh, but fortunately, other than being a little bit shell-shocked, she had no obvious uh, injuries. However, a, a couple of hours later in the ER, she developed substernal chest pain that radiated to her left shoulder. A uh, stat chest CT was unremarkable. Uh, ECG, though, uh, showed anterolateral T-wave inversions uh, with a, a prolonged uh, QTC. She got a stat echo, uh, which showed severe anterior and apical hypokinesis uh, with a moderately decreased ejection fraction. Troponin was 1.8 nanograms per mil. So uh, she was sent to the cath lab uh, for coronary angiography and possible PCI. So on uh, diagnostic angiogram, uh, the RCA uh, had only mild uh, disease. The LED was uh, without significant disease. And the uh, left circumflex and ramus uh, were uh, unremarkable as well. And uh, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, given her classic presentation, the left ventriculogram showed the classic pattern of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Uh, there is severe hypokinesis to akinesis of the mid left ventricle to the apex. Uh, the base is very hyperdynamic, and hence the other common name for this condition, uh, which is uh, apical ballooning syndrome. Uh, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is also known as stress cardiomyopathy or uh, broken heart syndrome. She uh, had markedly elevated uh, left-sided cardiac filling pressures. Uh, her LVDP was uh, 30 to 35 millimeters of mercury. So uh, the mechanism for Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is uh, still not completely understood. Um, however, it is generally thought that there is an element of uh, catecholamine-induced microvascular spasm, uh, possibly induced by emotional stress uh, that causes uh, myocardial stunning. And as the catecholamine rush recedes, uh, the spasm eases and uh, myocardial function uh, returns to normal. Uh, so treatment is therefore supportive uh, with a standard heart failure therapy prescribed uh, to ride out the period of myocardial dysfunction. Uh, in severe cases, uh, some patients may require inotropes, uh, vasopressors, or uh, uh, balloon pumps uh, and uh, mechanical uh, circulatory support. Uh, the prognosis is generally very good. Uh, the vast majority of patients fully recover, and uh, EF uh, usually normalizes within uh, one to four weeks. And there is about a 1.8% uh, recurrence rate uh, for the patient uh, per year. Um, however, a, a subset of these patients can uh, develop severe cardiomyopathy and get very sick. And there is a 4.1% uh, in hospital mortality. So after her cath, our patient was moved uh, to the uh, cardiac telemetry unit. Her initial vitals were quite stable. Her blood pressure was uh, 115 over 75, and her heart rate was uh, 80. Uh, she had an oxygen saturation of 95% on two liters. Uh, with her elevated uh, left-sided cardiac filling pressures, uh, she was started on intravenous uh, diuretics. Unfortunately, over the next two to three hours, uh, she uh, started declining. Uh, she became progressively hypotensive, uh, tachycardic, and dyspneic. Uh, she started requiring more oxygen and was eventually moved to a non-rebreather. Uh, the uh, intensivist was called. Her blood pressure at the time was uh, 85 over 60. Her heart rate was 110, and uh, she uh, was moved uh, to the intensive care unit. In the ICU, uh, she was uh, placed on BiPAP. Uh, she received a bolus of fluid and was started on norepinephrine. However, her uh, blood pressure did not improve. And in fact, uh, she developed worsening shock uh, despite uh, the uh, escalating uh, doses of the norepinephrine infusion. Uh, the cath lab was called uh, for an urgent balloon pump placement. And at that point, her blood pressure was uh, 70 over 50. Her heart rate was uh, 120, and a, a second presser uh, was uh, being hung. 
So uh, what happened? Well, uh, it turns out that this patient had a case of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, but with such a hypercontractile base that she developed left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Uh, this was seen on the left ventriculogram and can be seen here on the echo as well. So uh, similar to patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, aggressive diuresis or inotropic agents can worsen her hypotension and even precipitate hemodynamic collapse. The treatment is opposite of one, uh, what one typically does um, for uh, heart failure patients. Uh, you want to avoid overdiuresis. In fact, giving fluids uh, will often be helpful. Uh, you want to avoid inotropes. In fact, giving uh, intravenous beta blockers, uh, such as Esmolol, uh, to reduce cardiac contractility will often help relieve the outflow tract obstruction. You actually want to increase afterload. And this is one of the few situations in cardiology where an alpha agonist like phenylephrine is useful. Uh, the benefit of a balloon pump is unclear. Uh, the reduction in afterload uh, may worsen uh, LV outflow tract obstruction, but may also help with pump failure, uh, which uh, many of these uh, patients uh, concurrently have as well. So uh, for this patient, uh, we switched uh, norepinephrine to phenylephrine. Uh, she was given fluids and an esmolol drip uh, was started, and uh, we decided not to place a balloon pump. And thankfully, over the next uh, couple of hours, um, her hemodynamics stabilized. Uh, she uh, was uh, moved back down to the step-down unit after uh, 48 hours and uh, was discharged home in good condition after another two days in the hospital. All right, so take-home messages. Uh, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is almost always transient. Uh, some patients do get very sick, uh, but most patients do well with supportive care uh, and standard heart failure therapy. But, and this is a very big but, uh, as this case illustrated, uh, for Takotsubo cardiomyopathy with a very hyperdynamic base, uh, consider the possibility of uh, left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. These patients can quickly deteriorate with diuresis and afterload reduction and need to be managed like patients with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So beta blockade, increased afterload, and uh, fluid resuscitation. Thank you for watching.